Hi and welcome. This time I want to show you how to make the eternal atmospheric patch which I posted a few days ago. And when I say eternal I mean that you play a few notes and then the synth goes on playing this patch eternally or let's say until you unplug the power cord. And because it's an eternal patch we have to do something in order to keep the sound interesting for a very long time. Which means that we need a lot of variation in the sound. And we are going to do this with a lot of modulation. And in fact, this time we are going to use the complete modulation matrix, every entry and all the modifiers. So let's start. I'm going to create a new patch. And of course, this time we don't need velocity because we are not going to play this patch with our hands. So I'm turning this down. And now we can start with the oscillators. Of course, the wavetable oscillators are perfect for this because they um, can create a lot of variation um, without filters, without um, any effects, just by playing the wavetable and scrolling through the waves. So oscillator 1 will be wavetable 54. And I'm choosing a wavetable in the middle of the list of wavetables. I'm going to explain this later. But 54 is somewhere in the middle of all the wavetables which are included in this synthesizer. We're going to change the level to zero because we are going to modulate this wavetable or the level of this oscillator with some modulation sources. So I'm going to turn this down to zero. And the balance will be in the middle, which means that the oscillator is rooted equally to filter one and filter two. This is the sound of the wavetable. Now I'm changing also the pulse width to 64. Again, this is a value in the middle of all the waves of the wavetable. And again, we are going to modulate the pulse width or the wave number with a modulation source later. And of course you can change the brilliance of the wavetable to get more um, digital artifacts. Oscillator 2 is also a wavetable type. I'm choosing number 30. But the exact number of the wavetable is not important this time. As I said, you're going to see this later. Again, I'm turning down the volume. I'm reducing the octave to 32. So as you can hear, this will create our drones later on. And I'm changing the pulse width again to 64. And again, I'm increasing the brilliance. And this oscillator is also rooted equally to filter 1 and filter 2.
And now we have a third oscillator, which is of course not a wavetable type. We're going to use the third oscillator to create um, frequency modulation style of sounds. I'm choosing the shape sawtooth. I'm changing the semitone and the um, detune in order to get an odd, odd frequency. I'm increasing the octave. So this will again create different sounds in our patch. We have um, oscillator 1 in the mid-range, oscillator 2 in the lower range and now oscillator 3 in the higher range. Again balance to the middle position. You can even change the brilliance for normal shapes, for classic analog style shapes. And now, this is important, we are going to choose the FM source oscillator 1 and change the amount to, let's say, 90. This already sounds experimental. And as the last um, source of noises, I'm going to use the noise oscillator. I'm keeping level zero. I forgot to turn down the level of oscillator three, of course, but as you can see, oscillator one is zero, oscillator two is zero, oscillator three is zero, and also the noise oscillator will be on level zero. I'm just changing the balance again to the middle position. And now we can go on with the filters. I'm going to prepare filter 1 for later modulation. This will be a bandpass type 12 dB, cut off down to 50. So um, I'm going to modulate um, the cutoff frequency and I'm choosing different um, frequencies of my inputs. And just these frequencies. No lower frequency, no higher frequency. And we are going to use the drive in the binary mode. This will create very experimental, very um, interesting sounds later. And filter 2 is a CUM filter. So I'm changing the type to CUM plus, reducing the cutoff to 60. Again, the cutoffs of filter 1 and filter 2 are in the mid position somehow so that I can modulate this position down and up. And finally, I'm going to change the amp envelope a little bit. I'm changing the attack to 100. And the release to And we are going to modulate the attack time and the release time of the amp envelope in the modulation matrix later so that some notes are fading in, some notes will appear immediately and the same will be the case with the release. In this patch I want to show you a trick which um, the Blofeld is capable of. You can use the envelopes 3 and 4 as additional LFOs. My LFOs 1, 2 and 3 will be occupied 
with other duties and will be turned to a very slow frequency. So I need an LFO for slightly higher frequencies. And in order to get this, you can change the envelope mode of all the envelopes to loop, let's say loop sustain 1 and sustain 2. We are changing the attack to 55. The attack level to the maximum. Decay to 50. Sustain to 69. Decay 2 to 80. The second sustain down to zero. And now you have some type of um, LFO. Of course, you don't get negative modulation by this LFO, but um, you get a cyclic um, modulation. And by changing, especially the time of decay one, you can change um, pretty much the speed of the LFO. And now I'm going to apply similar parameters to envelope four so that we are so that, that we have actually um, like five LFOs in our patch, two of them being fake LFOs. Okay, so now we have two fake LFOs, but what about the real LFOs? As I said before, I want to create very slow modulations with LFOs 1, 2 and 3. So I'm going to change the speed of LFO 1 to 4, the speed of LFO 2 to 6, and LFO 3 to 5. Because we have a patch which evolves over time, which plays for a long time, I also want to have very slow modulations. Because when you have only fast modulations, you will have the same sounds um, over and over again. You will hear all modulation combinations in a very short time range. If you, have, if you want to have um, different values over a long time, you have to create slow modulations. So I'm using LFO 1, 2 and 3 for slow modulations. But that's actually not all. I'm going to use the LFOs and the modifiers to create even more modulation sources. But before we are going to apply this to the blowfield itself, I want to show it in the simulator. I hope um, the explanation in the simulator will be more clear than just the blank parameters on the display. So let's have a look on the simulator. I'm going to recreate the LFOs right here. F01 with speed 4 and free phase. This is the standard in the blowfield. LF02 has the speed 6 and LF03 has the speed 5. So let's have a look on the LFOs. The 
the range is not fitting here, so I'm changing this a bit. Yeah, let's say it looks more or less like this. So we have three um, LFOs, all with a free face and um, with slightly different um, time values. And what I'm doing now is I'm combining LFO1 and LFO2 with a modifier. So let's hide LFO3. Source 1 is LFO1, source 2 is LFO2. Now I'm going to use the multiplication. And what we get is this. So we have a new modulation source, which is dependent from the speed of LFO1 and 2. And the speed of the um, peaks of this modulation um, or the appearance of the speaks of this modulation um, is higher than just the peaks of LFO1 or just the peaks of LFO2. But there's also a variation in the amplitude. So when you're multiplying um, two sine waves, you get a faster modulation but no constant amplitude. So we can use modifier 1 for slightly faster modulations. So we are going to use um, modifier 1 for slightly faster modulations. And of course you can do this also with the second modifier. Now I'm going to use the result of modifier 1 combined with LFO3, again with a multiplication. And what we get here is something which is dependent from the speed of LFO1, 2 and 3. Okay, so with this trick you can create modulations which are dependent from the LFOs but can be also used um, in a, um, as, as an opposite for the LFOs. If you would modulate everything with just the same modulation sources, you would only get um, equal modulations. Of course, you can apply um, a positive and a negative modulation to something, but um, there will be no variety. It, it will be controlled with the same source so um, that you don't get um, surprising values or surprising combinations of your values. But with the modifiers you can um, bring more um, changes into your patch. Now that we discussed um, the LFOs and modifiers 1 and 2, we still have to talk about modifiers 3 and 4. What I'm doing here is I'm using the constant value 52 It's just that I tried different values and then I chose um, one of the values which s sounded good. Especially when you create a patch, it's important to trust your ears and not your eyes. So sometimes you get strange values or odd values, but they sound good. And what I'm doing with the constant value is I'm using LFO2 and the constant value here and I'm combining both values with an exclusive or binary modifier 
And what I get here is this. So we get very strange, very wild um, modulation values. And I'm going to use these values, especially for things like um, stereo panorama modulation, so that we get very fast um, and chaotic and wild changes. And I'm also applying this to modifier 2. So I'm going to use modifier 2 as the source and again 52 as the constant value, applying the exclusive OR. And what we get is this. No, this. So again, slightly different values than from modifier 3, but also very chaotic, very wild. Okay, so now we have to transmit everything what you saw here on the screen to the Blofeld. So let's change to the modifiers. And LFO1 will be combined with LFO2 with a multiplication and modifier 1 will be combined with LFO3 with a multiplication and LFO2 will be combined with a constant value of 52 with an, with an XOR And modifier 2 will be combined with 52, also with an XOR. So now we have a whole bunch of different modulation sources. We have three LFOs, we have four modifiers, the two envelope generators and loop mode, and don't forget that I'm still not using the filter envelope, which can be also um, put in a loop mode. So if you have still time and want to do even more, you can also use um, the filter envelope. And here comes the fun part. Now we have to apply all the modulation sources to the modulation slots and I'm going to start with the oscillators. Oscillator 1 will be modulated with LFO2. As you can hear, it's a very, it's a very slow modulation. Oscillator two will be modulated with LFO two, but in the opposite direction. And our filters will be modulated too. Filter 1 will be modulated by modifier 1. With the amount of 60. The panorama will be modulated by modifier 3. As I said before, binary operation, a lot of fast, wild changes of the value, 
and this is simply perfect for the panorama modulation. And filter 2 will be modulated by LFO 3 with the amount of 57 and again the panorama by the modifier, this time modifier 4, with the amount of 60. And now we are going to start with the modulation matrix. And as I said before, we are going to use every, every slot of the modulation matrix. Um, the entries 1 and 2 will have an amount of 0 and I won't explain this before I'm doing this, because this can be confusing. The slots 1, 2, 3 and 4 are also modulation destinations. So if you want to modulate the intensity of a modulation, you have to use the slots 1, 2, 3 and 4 for um, the actual modulation which you want to modulate. That's an interesting fact because um, it can help you in the patch design. So when you're doing a patch, it can be um, it can be a a good practice to keep slots one to three and, and four um, empty and start with slot five because at some point maybe you want to modulate a modulation and then you don't have to um, copy your previous modulation to a different slot to use the first slots, you can use them directly. So what I'm going to do here is I'm applying the envelope 3 to oscillator level 3. As I said, with the amount of 0. And I'm using envelope 4 for filter 1 drive. You remember, it's the um, binary um, distortion mode and also with the amount of zero. Now I'm using LFO3 to modulate filter one resonance. As you can hear, there is no sound yet because we did not modulate the level of the oscillators, so we can not hear the result yet. In the fourth slot, I'm using modifier 2 for the modulation of filter 2 resonance. And now, finally, we are modulating the modulation with LFO1. I'm changing the modulation intensity of modulation slot 1 with the amount of 50. Now we can hear some noises. And I'm modulating with LFO2 the decay of envelope 3. As I said, the decay of a loop envelope pretty much um, controls the speed of this fake LFO. 
in modulation slot 7 we are going to let LFO3 modulate the second modulation slot with the amount of 40. So this is the filter 1 drive intensity. Modulation 8 will be modifier 1 controlling oscillator 1 level. And modifier 2. Controlling oscillator to level. Both levels, both levels controlled with sixty three. In the 10th modulation, I'm using modifier 4 for the attack time. And modifier 1 for the release time. Now we have modulation 12. This is modifier 4. Controlling the noise level. So you already get very wild results, but there are still four modulation slots. Modulation 13 will be LFO2 controlling the noise balance. By 63. This is not the panorama, this is the balance between filter 1 and filter 2. Modulation 14 is LFO2 controlling the balance of oscillator 1. Fifteen is LFO three controlling the wavetable and this is something I have to explain because what we are doing here is not a modulation of the wave position within the wavetable but we are going to change the wavetable itself that's wh why I chose wavetable 54 and wavetable 30 for oscillator 1 and oscillator 2 because 
what we are doing here is we are going to switch between the wavetables of all the wavetables within the blow field. And this is not a constant modulation, like scrolling through one wavetable. The wavetable will be chosen when you hit the key or when you play the note. So what we are doing here is a two-dimensional modulation. We are modulating the wave within one wavetable and we are also changing the wavetable. But the wave scrolling is continuously and the jump between different wavetables um, will be triggered by um, a new node. So we are doing this with oscillator 1 and we are doing this with oscillator 2. So we already have a very experimental sound using all modulation slots, using different modulation sources, even creating fake LFOs. We can even add more sound to the sound by using the flanger effect. You can change um, effect slot 1 to flanger and um, changing the depth to 74 and I would reduce the speed to let's say 2 so that you get very slow just slide just just slow changes of the sound but of course you can choose the parameters just like you want them and i think 25 in the mix will do the job so now we have one more problem because we don't want to play this patch we want this patch to play itself so what we need here is of course the arpeggiator we are going to change the arpeggiator to the hold mode it will hold the keys which we play the clock will be changed to 10 bars so this will be a very very slow arpeggiator the octave can be changed to 2 so that we get more different frequencies more different notes the length can be also 10 bar so that the note will be hold as long as um, the gap is between one note and the next note now we already have a self-playing patch with a lot of variation a lot of different noises and so on but the most important part of this atmospheric patch is of course the reverb and the standard parameters of the reverb and the blowfield when you create a new patch are pretty bad but you can get a very soft and um, almost eternal reverb by changing the parameters and i really encourage you to try different parameters different values for the shape parameter for um, the diffusion parameter and so on so let's have a look on effect slot 2 we already have reverb here we are going to change the high pass value to 5 and the low pass to 90 
diffusion can be maximum, size can be maximum, shape to zero, decay, this is now important, decay and damping to 124. And now let's add some reverb to our patch. So actually the reverb is um, the magic trick to make a simple sound with a lot of modulation. Well, simple sound with a lot of modulation sounds weird. Let's say a rather boring and experimental sound um, to change it to a very atmospheric and very interesting sound. I hope you enjoyed this larger tutorial. Um, if you want to see more patch tutorials, check out my channel. Um, if you want to have this um, patch sheet for yourself, um, for your own patches, check out the link below. If you're interested in the uh, modulation simulator, check out the other link below. If you are interested in the sounds which I create, check out my Blowfold sound banks in the third link below. If you like these types of tutorials, make a like and thanks for watching and have a nice day.